Okay, now class, today we are going to be thinking about our future. Woo! Future! Yay! yay future! Yay, yay, future! Woo, yay, yay, woo. Future! Okay, now one by one, I want you all to tell me what you want to do when you're older, okay? You first then, Susie. I want to be in the me parade! Good, Susie, well done. Um, now you, Stephen. I... I want to be in the me parade as well! Great, Stephen, that's wonderful. And how about you, Swazdala? I want to... um... I think I want to be in the me parade. That's excellent! I'm sure you'll make a fine me parader. And now... How about you, Pipe? I want to play baseball! Oh, uh, <laughs> now Pipe, I know sometimes we can all get a little ahead of ourselves, but we here in the Me Plaza have all been designated to be in the Me Parade, okay? I want to play baseball! Yes, Pipe, I heard you the first time, but it's the Me Parade for you, you little rascal. I wanna... Now don't you say it. I wanna play baseball! Now listen to me, Pipe. It's not going to happen. Maybe if you were born in the Wii Sports home menu, you'd get the chance. But that's a long, long way away from here. Ah, <sighs> sorry class, I almost forgot my indoor voice there. Um, miss, which way would this Wii Sports home menu be? Just out of interest, not for any reason or anything. Oh, you'd, you'd have to go left for ages. Now enough of that. Okay, moving on. Hmm, how about you, Pop it? W w pipe? Where do you think you're going? Pipe, come back here right now! Pipe! Pipe! Oh god! Pipe, come back! Pipe! 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 Oh, oh, must uh, play baseball! Oh, hello! Um, what's your name? Um, I'm Pipe. Are you lost out here too? You aren't? What are you doing here then? You want me to follow you? Oh, okay. Well, lead the way. Okay everyone, let's get stretching those non-existent arms. The day of the semi-finals had finally arrived, and the steamers were warming up for their match against Yarikawa Prefecture. Okay, steamers, gather round! But as Engine Room prepared to give his pre-match speech, an all-too-familiar voice called out from behind. Hey, Stoke-on-Trent snivellers. Can't believe you got this far. Must have been very lucky. Well, it doesn't matter much anyway. Not even luck will get you past Yarikawa Prefecture. Guess you'll just have to watch us in the final. <laughs> Lucia trotted away. Don't listen to her, everyone. She's all talk, we know that. Now, Mind Brain, give us the rundown. Yarikawa Prefecture are a team that anchor around their ingenious captain, Shinosuke. In the baseball world, they call him the Inventor. Not only because his first name is Archimedes, but because he has a real talent for inventing tactics. For example, to intimidate the opposition, he makes every single player on his team cosplay as one of the greatest baseball players of all time. What? That sounds dumb. It's not dumb if it works. I myself am a bit of a fan of his. <laughs> In fact, remember that move we used against the Pittsburgh Purples? Well, that was actually a variation on a move he invented, known as the Yarikawa Stack, in which batters purposely play it safe and go for singles, allowing them to fill out the bases and pile up the runs one by one. If our fielding is good, we'll be okay, but we shouldn't get complacent. Shinosuke has plenty other moves, like the inverse fakey fakey and the Shinosuke Swaz, and the... well, you get the point. Keep on your non-existent toes, everyone. And as Mind Brain's rundown finished, both teams were called over for the lineup, and the game began. From the very first ball, Pipe found out exactly what Mind Brain had been talking about. Shinosuke pitched, and the ball curved aggressively towards him. This must be the famous Shinosuke Swaz, he thought. And, expecting another vicious pitch, Pipe swiped early. But this time, Shinosuke had pitched straight, and Pipe's shot looped over the Yarikawa bases and earned him a single. Pipe had got lucky, but Shinosuke never made the same mistake twice, and Barnow was subjected to three Shinosuke Swazes in a row. 
Spindle prepared for the worst, but this time, Shinosuke managed to spin the ball away from her, catching her off guard and resulting in another out. With yet more dipping, swerving and diverging pitches, Xavier suffered the same fate, and as seemed customary at this point, the Steamers had scored zero runs in their first innings. Pipe was now in a difficult situation. Did he go all out and risk being humiliated by the Arikawa stack, or... Well, he couldn't really think of any other options. Pipe pitched the best he could, but after a famous Shinosuke single and a double to follow, Yarikawa had very much begun to stack the bases, and it wasn't long before they had their first run on the board. Pipe was getting increasingly more fired up, and as a result, he did manage to pitch one batter out. Not only this, but it dawned on him to try his new technique, underarm pitching, which might give him a bit more of an advantage. This worked well. The Yarikawa batters were not used to anything of the sort, and all Pipe needed was one more out, and the steamers could focus on making a comeback. But then, Saburo stepped up to bat. What? But it couldn't be. Saburo was the captain of the team they had just beaten, the British Museum Association baseball team. Pipe, it's not me. It's someone dressed as me. Imposter. Imposter, I say! Pretender to the throne! But Pipe couldn't hear him. Ah, uh, now there's two Saburos, thought Pipe. And he was so shocked that for his next few pitches, he was unable to concentrate, letting Yarikawa go 3-0 up. And then, Victor stepped up to bat. How could this be happening? He was sure that Victor played for the British Museum Association baseball team as well. Pipe, that's not me! I'm Victor! That's someone dressed as me! Pipe was yet again in a state of shock, and Yarikawa scored another run. But as Shinosuke stepped up to bat for the second time, Pipe realised what was going on. This was one of his dirty tactics. It was just as Mind Brain said. The Yarikawa players were cosplaying as other famous baseballers. Clearing his head, Pipe let out a sigh of relief, and he was able to end Yarikawa's first innings. Then there was Venus, Strike. and Engine Room now knew it was up to him, the captain, to change the momentum of the game. The crowd looked on with unease, but on the steamer's bench, they knew that their captain shone brightest in the face of adversity. And this time too, he did not disappoint. With this magnificent home run, the steamers went into overdrive. Wrinkles was able to hit a smart double. Barnell fine-tuned his senses and sent the ball on the perfect course for another spectacular home run. Woo! 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 And, using her huge open mouth, Spindle took one of her whirlwind breaths, sucking in all the oxygen around her and allowing her to supercharge her shot for another home run. The steamers were now ahead by five runs to four, and despite the fact that Cardboard couldn't keep the hot streak going, Pipe was finally on his game, and nobody was going to stop him reaching the final he was destined to be in. He collected out after out, and even fake Saburo was no match for his speed. The steamers didn't even need to score in their third innings. Pipe was a man on a mission, and taking a leaf from Shinosuke's book, Pipe spanned the ball close to the Yarikawa batters, forcing them to balloon the ball into the air only to be caught out by the equally motivated Steamers fielders. The one obstacle now was Shinosuke. But what Shinosuke didn't realise is that Pipe had plenty of tricks of his own. Splitters, spin balls and underarm pitching all combined into one. Shinosuke couldn't handle it. The ball hit the backstop's gloves, he was struck out and the game ended. It was completely surreal. Pipe was living the dream. The steamers were going to be in the final, and he almost couldn't believe it. But he didn't need to convince himself, as confirmation rang around the stadium that very instant. That's it! That's the final result of the day, ladies and gentlewomen, and it sets up a mouth-watering final. Tomorrow, it will be my pleasure to present to you the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers versus today's other victors, Lucia's baseball team. The determination emanating from the steamer's bench was so red hot that Shinosuke was able to stand there and roast a marshmallow on it. They were going to beat Lucia tomorrow and lift that trophy. Nothing could stop them now. But then, 
that night. Happy birthday! Wow, Wrinkles, I can't believe you're a hundred years old. You don't look a day over eighty-seven. Here, Wrinkles, I got you a fifty-pound Amazon gift card, and I bought you the DVD box set of your favourite anime, Kung Fu Panda. And here you go, Grandad. I forged you a new samurai sword. Thanks, Engine Room. An old timer like me really doesn't deserve a grandson as good as you. Ah, <sighs> but do you know what, everyone? The greatest gift I've received is something all of you helped with, and that's a place in the Wii Baseball World Cup final. Woo! Woo! -hoo, woo! Yay! I want to share with you now the greatest piece of wisdom my old sensei ever imparted on me. It was my very first baseball game all the way back in the year 2000, when I was only 79 years old, and he said to me, "Wrinkles." There is no I in team, but there's four of them, and let's freaking win this thing. So tomorrow, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna win as a team. The next day came all too quickly, and Pipe and the team found themselves warming up for the final. The atmosphere in the stadium was boisterous, but even with the crowd at full tilt, Pipe could still hear the unmistakable droning tone of Lucia. Well, it's a shame they made it all the way to the final. It'll make going home empty-handed so much harder for them. We're gonna have to deal with a lot of that today," said Mindbrain. "Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me," recited Wrinkles. We all know how Lucia's baseball team plays. It might be strange to revolve your entire playing style around verbally abusing the opposition, but it seems to work. I mean, they've managed to insult their way past the Mordor giants for crying out loud. At that moment, the announcer began to speak. Well, well, well! It's been a long old road for these two teams. A fierce rivalry in the group stage, a tough road through the knockouts, and finally they meet on the biggest of stages. Women and children, give them a big hand once again. The Stoke-on-Trent Steamers and Lucia's baseball team. The players lined up amongst a cacophony of noise. Just so you know, Pipe. Whatever happens today, I'm glad Beanus found you back then. Engine room was shaking with nerves, but Pipe was trying his best to stand firm. The game started, and he and Lucia were once again staring each other face to face. I'm sorry, new boy. I'm sure it took you a long time to get here, but I'm gonna have to send you back to the Me Plaza now. This hit Pipe really hard, as he didn't in fact want to go back to the Me Plaza. Worry began to creep into his mind. What would happen if they lost? Would his baseball dream be over? Would he really have to return to a lifetime in the Me Parade? Lucia's eyes lit up as she watched Pipe become increasingly consumed by worried thoughts, and taking the initiative, she pitched before he had time to refocus. Pipe was caught out. If the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers hadn't started the game tense enough, the prospect of Mindbrain batting next wasn't making things any better. Please, Mindbrain, no stupid tactics. This time, just keep it simple. But Mindbrain had other ideas. Coordinates of X16, Y34, Z29. This is Alpha Bravo Delta Foxtrot with an east-westerly wind of 34 paradigms an hour, calculating maximum output at 60%. Carry the 15, make way for the 6, divide by the 2 and a 9th. Cross the I, dot the T's, coming in hot with extra source, times by the power of 357. Over the hills and far away, 011000111000111100111. Oh no, he's overheating. Mindbrain had hit the ball straight towards Lucia. She was going to catch him out. But then... Single. Mindbrain's plan had worked perfectly. He'd placed a hidden backspin on the ball that took it away from Lucia's grasp. Mindbrain had scored a single. Then there was Venus. And now that a small amount of momentum had been built up, Smaug was able to strike the ball with enough conviction to bag herself a double, scoring the Steamers their first run. Lucia stepped up her game. Oh look, it's Owl Boy. Bit early this for you, isn't it? Aren't you nocturnal? But before Barn Owl could panic, Wrinkles shouted from the bench. In times of great need, family comes first. Barnell took his advice, and focused his senses in the direction of the stands where his parents were sitting. 
Hit it top right, son! And with expert precision, Barnell smashed the ball to the top right of the field, and it ricocheted around the walls of the stands to score an epic triple. triple. The steamers were now 3-0 up. Although his advice was sound, now being over 100 years old, Wrinkle's samurai senses were beginning to dull, and, paired with some off-putting shouts from Lucia, You're old! You're old! He was unable to hit the ball. Lucia was now desperate to end the steamer's first innings, and as Scalene stepped up, her words became even more harsh. Ooh, look at those disgusting muscly arms. Ooh, yuck, nasty, ooh. Oh. Scalene was feeling self-conscious, until Wrinkles once again chimed in with a pearl of wisdom. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. He was right. The one thing Scalene valued most in the world was strength. And in that regard, her arms were beautiful. She summoned more power into her arms than she ever had before. Scalene had hit many home runs, but this time she would go even further. And with an earth-shattering crack and a swing that felt like it would split her bat in two, she jet-propelled the ball nearly into orbit. A huge hit that bypassed the stands and went out of the park. 5-0 up, the steamer's first innings ended with Xavier, but they had accumulated a monumental lead. It was now time for Pipe to pitch, but although she wasn't getting through to anyone else, Lucia was causing Pipe real problems. Nobody's gonna care about you once this is done, by the way. Win or lose, you're going back home. Once again, Pipe's thoughts began to spiral, and before he knew it, Lucia, Ren, and Yoshi had all scored doubles. All of a sudden, the steamer's lead wasn't looking quite as substantial. Pipe tried his best to focus, but even with the ball hit straight towards him, he could do nothing but parry and fumble. 5-3. Enough, thought Pipe. He hadn't got all this way just to let everyone down. And with great determination, and a good final catch from Wrinkles, he managed to get three players out in a row, and send the steamers into their second innings with a slender advantage. But Pipe's challenge wasn't over yet, as after Spindle had managed to single, it was his turn to bat. Yeah, might as well get packing now. I'll make sure to wave you off as you go. Pipe missed the ball. It was still bothering him. What would he do when this was over? But then, some cheers came from the bench. Let's go, Pipe! You can do it! Chin up, champ! We're with you, man! Pipe's determination tripled in size. If he really was leaving after this, he wanted to make sure he did his job properly, and went home with a win. If not for himself, for his teammates, his friends. Bang! Great hit, and a huge home run from Pipe meant the score was now 7-3. The steamers had lift off again. That is, until Mindbrain did this the very next second. You're out! Curses. My eyes were crossed. And then, there was Venus. Hold on. Who on earth are you? I don't even remember you. I mean, seriously, have you been playing this whole time? Huh. I barely even noticed you. It's like you don't even exist. Oh no. No, Lucia, stop. Mr. Nobody, they should call you. Mr. Irrelevant. Lucia, stop. You don't know what you're doing. What's the big deal? I'm just saying how nobody cares about it. Oh. Um. Oh god. Oh, oh god. How do I stop it? Um. Hi, Venus. Hey, I I'm sorry for not noticing you. In fact, oh yes, I remember you now. You're that, um, a really good baseball player, right? Wow, I'm, I'm so sorry I never talked to you before. <laughs> I guess I just feel this need to insult everyone because I'm insecure about my baseballing abilities. And my overcompetitiveness leads me to push everyone I ever cared about away. Wow, you're really good at listening, actually. Oh, huh, that's crazy. I actually feel a lot better now. And now that Venus had calmed down, and Lucia was feeling refreshed, she gave him a soft ball, and he was able to hit it high into the air for another home run. Home run. Wow, she calmed him down. I don't believe it. Maybe she's beginning to soften. Oh, for goodness sake. Hey, Big Chin, keep control of your stinky players next time. Oh, 
No, she's back to normal. But it was worse than that. Lucia was on edge after accidentally opening up. Get out of my way, Barn Owl, you vermin! You bird-brained fool! And she was able to catch Barn Owl out. Pensioner! Pensioner! She chanted at Wrinkles, but Wrinkles was unfazed. He thought back yet again to when he was just a young samurai. His sensei had made him sit under a waterfall until he was so calm that he couldn't even hear the water rushing past him. Using this technique, he blocked out Lucia's crazed insults and hit the ball for yet another home run. 10-3. Right. The steamers couldn't believe their eyes, particularly Wrinkles as he was blind. But they were 10-3 up in the final. And, spurred onwards by their scintillating form, Oscar was caught out by Smaug. Lucia was caught out by none other than Venus, and with the crowd chanting his name at a volume he'd never heard before, the game was ended in immaculate style by Xavier. The Stoke-on-Trent Steamers player's ears were blessed with the sound of the referee's whistle as he declared a mercy rule. The Steamers had won. They had won the Wii Baseball World Cup. Pipe was in tears of joy. He was so happy. He looked around at his teammates' beaming faces, and then... No, 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 no! shouted Lucia. No! Referee, objection! Oh, give it up, Lucia. Referee, the opposition are fielding an illegal player! <gasps> the crowd took a collective intake of breath. That player there, she pointed her baseball glove straight at Wrinkles, is 100 years old! And if I remember correctly, which I think I do, this competition has an age limit of 99. Is this true? said the referee. Well, yeah. You have to disqualify them! You just have to! Lucia, stop! They should be banned! Banned for life! Throw them to the wolves! Lucia, you're frothing at the mouth for God's sake. Referee, what the he- Oh, hey Venus, what's up man? What the heck is going on? Interjected Sam and Fish's Captain James. Referee, you can't- uh, Oh, hi Venus, how's it going friend? You can't ban them! They've worked so hard to get here! Said Big H from the Gary Barlow and Xavier Fan Club Baseball Society. Referee, don't do that. Oh, hey Venus, long time no see man. Don't do this, please! Said Sabaro from the British Museum Association Baseball Team. Hmm, said the referee. Hmm... Hmm... And then, he made a decision. Well, I have no idea what's going on down there in the ground, but oh! Uh, oh yes, I'm just getting confirmation now. It seems the final will be replayed without the offending player. Pipe's stomach dropped. Not only would they have to play the final again, but they would have to do it without wrinkles. The team were devastated. All except for Wrinkles himself. Oh, come on guys, can't have any of you shedding tears for an old timer like me. You know, my old sensei told me that a day would come where I would go from student to teacher. I was expecting to be at least 147 before that day came, but it seems the time has come a little bit early. Yes. Now everyone, deep breaths, we can do this. And for the second time that day, the players lined up, and the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup Final commenced. The events that had just transpired had clearly left Lucia unhinged. Bye bye new boy! Bye bye! <laughs> and Pike was so worried for her sanity, that he didn't hit his shot with as much power as usual. As a result, he was caught out. Mindbrain tried to get things back on track by attempting the backspin move he had done earlier, but Lucia had reached a whole new level, and was able to hold the ball tight enough to keep it in her gloves. With things getting even more concerning, Smaug 2 mishit her shot straight into the ground, and the steamer's first innings was over already. This wasn't how things were supposed to end. What on earth was going on? Pipe was now once again facing the reality of going back to the Mii Plaza empty-handed. Luckily for him though, Lucia was so busy laughing maniacally that she didn't even swing for the ball. And suffering from a lack of guidance, the rest of Lucia's baseball team seemed completely clueless. Within an instant, both teams' first innings had ended with no runs scored. But the insanity continued. Spindle only managed a single, and Barnell was caught out. 
and it was at this point that Wrinkles stepped in with his first teaching. He spoke directly to Scalene. With great power comes great power. Wrinkles was right. Scalene did have very powerful arms, and with that came great power. Scalene was inspired, and utilizing what Wrinkles had taught her, she fired the ball far across the field and out for a home run. Okay, thought Pipe. Normal service resumed. They were back ahead, and even though Xavier was then caught out, followed by Venus, heading into his second pitching innings, Pipe was feeling a little more composed, and he started strong by getting Marco caught out. But it wasn't going to be that easy. And, still just as irrational as before, Lucia shouted from the sidelines. Nobody cares about you, Pipe! You're an imposter! An imposter to Wii Sports! And an imposter to baseball! Just go home and save us all the trouble! What? No, that's not true! Don't listen to her, Pipe! Shouted Engine Room in retaliation. But Pipe was back in a world of worry. It was true. He was never meant to be here. Anna scored a double. Did the rest of his team think of him as an intruder as well? James scored a double. Was he treading on other people's non-existent toes? Jake scored a double. Someone else deserved to be here instead. Mike scored a double. And he was just taking up other people's space. Lucia scored a double. Would it have been better for everyone else if he had never left the Mi Plaza? The pattern continued over and over. And when Pipe finally came back to his senses, the steamers were 6-2 down, going into their final innings of the tournament. Things couldn't get much worse. And due to this, as Pipe stepped up to bat, Wrinkles decided to give his second teaching. When you hit bedrock in Minecraft, the only way you can go is up. Pipe hit a single. Maybe Wrinkles was right again. A single was better than nothing at all. And it wasn't just Wrinkles who was thinking positively despite the steamer's precarious position. What? What is Mind's brain doing? Oh no, he's not gonna... Temperature is 4.5 degrees to the nearest decimal. The Eiffel Tower is 320 meters tall, 13 meters taller than Tokyo Tower, which means I need to adjust by two percentiles. If I could rearrange the alphabet, I'd put you and I together, take away the four, add the five to the power of ten, and here we go! Mind Brain had hit the ball properly, and it soared up into the air. But it wasn't going far enough. At this rate, he'd be caught out! It was all a ruse. Mindbrain had taken the backspin technique he'd been working on earlier and applied it to an actual hit. And this was the catalyst the team needed to really kick into gear. Smaug scored a beautiful double, taking them to 6-4. Then Spindle with a single, and Barnell with his exact precision brought them within one run. Scalene used her powerful arms to perform yet more heroics. And, all of a sudden, the steamers found themselves ahead. And then, there was Venus. Gah! I can't stand it! I don't want to lose! It's just not fair! All I've ever done is play baseball, and then some kid walks in from the Mi Plaza, and somehow he deserves to win! It can't be my fault! It's my team! They suck! I know I keep shouting at them, but what am I supposed to do? Well, yeah, I suppose I wouldn't like it if someone said that stuff to me. <sighs> what am I doing? Why am I so angry all the time? And having somehow disarmed Lucia once again, Venus scored another run, and Mindbrain called the steamers over for a team huddle. Okay everyone, we're 8-6 up. They still have one batting innings left, so this is where we have to seal the deal. But don't worry, because I have a plan. Remember the Yarikawa stack? Well, we're gonna perform a mini version of that. Our next two in the running are Engine Room and then Pipe. All I need you two to do is get us a single. I've spotted a weakness in between their first base and the fielder behind, so I recommend hitting the ball into the ground so it bounces over them. Okay, you've got it, mind brain. And then what? What? Well, what's next? Oh, don't worry. Just make sure you can get those singles. But surely there's no point stacking unless... But before Pipe could finish his sentence, the game was about to resume. An engine room stepped up to bat. 
Like a true captain, Engine Room knew he had to set an example to his players. And, as reliable and brave as ever, he smashed the ball straight into the ground. It looped past first base, and he scored a single. OK, Pipe, this is it. You can do it, he shouted as he ran to first base. But Pipe was feeling the pressure. As Engine Room said, this was it. If he scored, then maybe the team would want to keep him around. But if he missed, he'd be heading back to the Mi Plaza, and he might never get to play baseball ever again. The tension was unbearable. That is, until Wrinkles gave his third and final piece of advice. Pipe, I'm sure you're worried right now about going home. Just remember this. Home is where the heart is, so where is your heart? Where was Pipe's heart? Well, it was here, with the team, playing baseball. It finally dawned on him. Going home didn't have to mean going back to the Mi Plaza. Here could be his home. Regardless of what happened, he would sleep in the team changing rooms if he had to. He was being so stupid. He and the team had come on such a journey together, from beating Brown Town on day one, to the round of 16, the quarters, the semis, and now here. He had seen enough in his teammates to know that even if they lost, they would never abandon him. His home was with the Stoke-on-Trent steamers, and in that case, going home didn't sound so bad. With the pressure lifted, Pipe was able to replicate engine room and bounce the ball, this time over second base to grab a single. Now, it was all up to Mind Brain, and as he stepped up, it became obvious what he was going to do. He's not going to try and hit a home run, is he? He's only ever hit the ball properly once in his life, and he nearly got caught. But Mind Brain had it all figured out. Wind speed, zero kilometers an hour. Temperature, a cool 12 degrees. Breathing, steady. No maths required. Conditions, perfect. The scoreline now read 12 runs to 6, and as the innings finally came to an end, Pipe felt the best he had all day. All he wanted now was to enjoy playing baseball again, and without further ado, he began to bring the sauce. Marco barely even saw the ball fly past his face before he was struck out. Lucia's baseball team weren't giving up so easily, and they did manage to pull one run back but Pipe was having too much fun to care. Oscar was bamboozled by the sheer speed of the ball coming towards him, and he could do nothing to stop the inevitable. And finally, in a truly fitting way, Pipe and Lucia faced off against each other again. Lucia tried her best to get a good connection, but Pipe was now emulating the Shinosuke Swaz, and she couldn't get a clean strike. With one last dipping pitch, Pipe finally pulled off a clean splitter and the crowd was sent into absolute pandemonium. This time, it was certain. There was no argument, and the stadium announcer confirmed what they could all hardly believe. And the winners of the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup Final, everyone give it up for the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers! Engine Room and Mind Brain hoisted Pipe up into the air, and performed victory laps with him on their shoulders. Barnell's parents had flown down onto the pitch, and Xavier was being mobbed by the Gary Barlow fans. Spindle, Scalene, Wrinkles, Cardboard and Smaug jumped for joy. And then there was Venus, who had stolen two baseball gloves and was wheeling the announcer around by the head. The prize-giving ceremony was a glorious occasion, and the crowd wept tears of joy as Engine Room held the golden Nintendo Wii aloft. Hey, now we've got the golden Nintendo Wii, what does everyone say to going back to the hotel and playing a few games on this bad boy? Yay, 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 woo, yay, yay, yay! But as they started heading back, Pipe suddenly broke off from the group. Unlucky guys, you all played really well. We'll just have to make sure to win it next time. Hey, Lucia, do you want to come play some Wii games with us? What? Me? Are you sure? Yeah, why not? Well, 
Um, do you have Nintendogs? I'm pretty good at that game if I do say so myself. And with that, all the players headed off together. They may have competed for different teams, they may have said some questionable things to each other, but in the wise words of Wrinkles as they walked away, when the baseball is done, and the Nintendo Wii has been won, a whole new friendship may just have begun.